Don't look now. Jacob Markstrom has earned his first shutout of the season as the Flames snag two points in a shootout against the Minnesota Wild. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Locked on Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every day or every moment more with FanDuel.com slash Locked on NHL. Well, (laughs) we talked about the Flames needing to go on a heater, and it's certainly is looking like they're taking our advice and listening to the episodes. And, you know, I'm sure this is what they're all listening to uh, pregame or on their way to the arenas. (laughs) But today we are going to run through Jacob Markstrom's performance last night, how Jacob Pelletier is loosening up this locker room and being what this team has needed and of course since it is international women's day we are going to talk about a few of my favorite women in this industry and why you should know them but before we do that please make sure you are subscribed to locked on flames wherever you get your podcasts it means a lot to me i'll leave a nice little five star rating and a little review uh and tell me what you think of the show i love hearing what, you know, when you're listening to the show, what, I don't know. I Sometimes I listen to podcasts when I'm in the shower and I have to deep condition my hair because I, it's going to keep the time. It's going to keep me entertained, right? So when are you listening to Locked on Flames? When, when are you, when, when did you expect Locked on Flames would cover a Jacob Markstrom shout out this season? I figured at some point, but I don't know if I figured if it was last night on the second half of a back-to-back in Minnesota in extra hockey. It was quite the performance for Jacob Markstrom and just absolutely phenomenal to see really from the whole team all around. That overtime goal did get called back due to it being offside. Um, You know, Minnesota thought it was the right call as well. It's fairly obvious. And I believe it was Dean Evanson who said, you know, you have to have control of the puck. So it just makes sense. It was the right call. Um, And I appreciate that because at least you are, (laughs) you know, you have a little bit of self-awareness there. But there was a quote later last night about how Rasmus Anderson had just like kind of stormed off the ice um, after the goal went in and he was halfway undressed in the locker room when the goal was called back and everyone was like, you need to like get dressed. And he, he hurried up uh, and went back out there in the shootout. So it's just, you know, I think emotions can get the best of people and <laughs> athletes, they're just like us. But it was Nazem Kadri and Tyler Toffoli that came up big in the shootout for the Flames. Kadri, of course, struck first, and then Toffoli had the actual game winner. Um, that's back-to-back nights for Tyler Toffoli. Not just, like, back-to-back games, like, okay, one on Monday and then one on Wednesday. Like, truly <laughs> back-to-back games. And uh, for it to be extra hockey, too, I think that that uh, speaks to this team's stamina. We've talked about how this team can kind of crumble under pressure and when one thing starts going wrong. But I think a lot of things did end up going in their favor last night and allowed them to have that confidence and just, again, that breath of fresh air and just kind of, again, turning that corner and being able to be like, the time is now for us to be a true NHL caliber hockey team (laughs) and last night uh Jacob Markstrom just performed out of his mind it was the most saves he has had all season and I wanted to I was interested to see what his other numbers looked like um and when they'd happened so back in December against Montreal he had had 37 saves and then before that it was October 25th with 32 saves against Pittsburgh. 
so again, like, I guess it doesn't, you can't really <laughs> attribute it to, you know, like there's this giant chunk of time in between there. Because when you looked, when I was looking through hockey reference, it wasn't like it was, you know, 37 one game, 19 the next, 20 here. Like, it was consistently like 20s, 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 20s. So, you know, the teams were were getting shots, but it, you know, the defense and whatnot just was allowing a little bit extra these nights, right? But Rasmus Anderson went on to say about Jacob Markstrom, he is unbelievable. He's been unbelievable the last five, six games. He really deserved that one today, last night. He deserved that shout out. I'm excited for him. It, it's really good for our team. He's our leader. And when he plays like that, we have a lot of confidence. And listen, his safe percentage is crawling back up there with an 8-9-3. It doesn't start with a 9, but it's not an 8-8 eight, eight or an 8-7. So we will, <laughs> we will happily take that, right? It just, again, it speaks to how highly regarded Jacob Markstrom is. I think everyone in that room always looks to him for leadership advice uh, or just kind of being that figure of leadership. I think there's really a few guys in the room that command that respect, and Markstrom is obviously one of them. I think in most locker rooms, it's going to be your starting goalie because, like we talked about yesterday, Goaltending is the only position where you are expected to be perfect 100% of the time. And it's great to see. It is. I think everything is finally clicking for this team. And now it's time to kind of uh, <laughs> put the pedal to the metal toward, for the final stretch of this season and hope that you don't miss the postseason by like a point or two. And coming up next, we are going to talk about the breath of fresh air that is Jacob Pelletier and what his presence, performance, and connection to this locker room means. But before we do that, I do want to tell you about our friends at FanDuel. We are well past the midway point of the NHL season, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet, which is up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. I was lucky enough to sign up and get a bonus bet. I mean, I got $10 back and I probably would have won like $6 on my bet. So uh, it was a win-win situation. All you have to do is download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from money line to point scores to number of saves. I uh, It was the game against Boston. I had bet that both goaltenders were going to have above, <laughs> uh, they were going to have 20 plus saves. And I was right. And FanDuel lets you combine your bets for a chance on a bigger payout with same game parlays. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That is fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me today. It is an absolute pleasure to be here with you. Make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you're getting your podcasts. And that way we can uh, hang out every day. I think that Jacob Pelletier is just this little hype man that everyone needs in their life. I, <laughs> you know, him and Huberdo have that French uh, Canadian, that uh, Quebec connection and they have just formed this bond that is absolutely adorable you see it on the ice you see it on social media with uh Huberto calling Pelts his son and just kind of like just embracing that mentor role and I think it is so nice to see um Pelts energy when it comes to, to hyping players up, reminds me a lot of uh, Sean Monahan 
and a lot of younger Sean Monahan and Johnny Gaudreau and just how like energetic and ecstatic and just pumped, genuinely pumped they were to be contributing and celebrating their teammates. Uh, you know, it is, it's great to see them stringing these two wins together. And even if they're not winning, they're still really good games. And especially, you know, I go back to that game against Boston and how many <laughs> saves uh, Allmark had to make, but also just the fact that the Flames were generating enough and being able to give Boston a run for their money, uh, considering they've been a lower end team going up against one of well, the best team in the NHL. So we know that they can hang with the big dogs. It's just a matter of them getting to that point. Um, but, you know, Jacob Pelletier, once again, just hyping these players up and just being this kind of, uh, the only way I can describe it is like this breath of fresh air, just breathing in new energy into this locker room. He's comfortable. He's excited. Even if it's not a good game, he is just taking it goal by goal, shift by shift. And last night it was when he, when Kadri had scored um, on in the shootout rather. And he's just like, yeah, like, let's go. Woohoo. Like pumping him up. And then the night before it was him trying to lift up Elias Lindholm and you just always see him, you know, hugging. He's the first one over in the celly. He's the first one to celebrate, you know, in the hugs, he's excited to win. He is excited to be that teammate that is cheering everyone on. And that's what a locker room needs. And I think I I think everyone needs a hype man or someone to keep in their pocket to hype them up. So if we can figure out a way to clone pelts and just kind of be like make this some sort of like toy, like, yeah, like, woohoo, you did it. Like, you remember the staples button? Like, that was easy. We need pelts. As a, as a staples button saying, like, good job, or you did it, congrats, right? But you have seen this locker room take a very, very sharp turn from where they were last year as a team. Last year, it was, you know, it's a lot easier to have fun when you're winning, right? It is so much easier to have fun when you're winning and to be in good spirits and to want to go and play on the ice, but the locker room has been so stiff. I feel like up until this point that it is just walking on eggshells, you know, you just, you say the same five things to the media every time they ask, because heaven forbid you speak your mind in hockey and, you know, you're a little bit more honest, it becomes front page news and you, now you're putting the locker room in a worse position, but you know, I think it's been loosening up a little bit. We talked about how stiff this team is and how it's one wrong move and they begin to spiral. And we, we've we avoided that um, these last few days. <laughs> and I know it's only like a very, very small sample size, but for the Flames to get to this point means that something else is going right. It means that the attitudes are changing the there's some sort of positivity in the room that you know like it's just been so like again just that sigh of relief and it's not about what the end of the season looks like right now it is about <laughs> getting those two points at the end of the game and it's just a shift by shift thing you you have to chunk it out Otherwise, you're going to get lost in the big picture in these final 17, 18 games. You need to breathe. You need to keep this excitement, this energy up. Marky's doing great. All the lines are producing, which is what you want. And you really can't ask for much else. Everyone is doing their job. Finally. <laughs> Finally. And coming up next, we are going to take a minute to celebrate International Women's Day on this fine Wednesday evening. 
But before we do that, I do want to take a quick minute to talk about Built Bars. Built Bars are a delicious tasting protein bar that is great for anyone who is looking to, you know, put some extra protein in their tank because they have about 17 grams of protein in each bar. And they're a delicious tasting treat covered in 100% real chocolate that only have 130-ish calories and uh, are low in carbs as well. So they're a delicious, they come in delicious tasting flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I don't know how Built Bar does it, but they truly do taste like candy bars. And that's that's the good part about eating healthy here, right? Because sometimes you're like, if I have to eat one more celery stick, I'm going to just throw it out the car window or wherever you're eating it, right? So Built Bars taste like candy bars, and you can pick up a box at Walmart in the pharmacy section if you are located near a Sam's Club, too. You can run to the pharmacy section and get their 13-bar box of brownie batter and churro, or you can order through Built.com. And thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. I'm so happy to be here with you. And uh, make sure you're following me on Twitter, at Jess Belmosto. Since it is International Women's Day, I thought we would wrap up the show with some love and praise for some of my favorite women in this industry. And I'm sure I'm going to leave people off because it is a very long list of women. But uh, first up is, of course... Uh, the Flames player development and three-time Olympic gold medalist, Rebecca Johnston. She is someone I've had the pleasure of speaking with on the on the show and just an absolute beast. She competed at the All-Star Game as well, and I just absolutely love her. Uh, again, another Canadian, Sarah Nurse. How can you not love Sarah Nurse? She is one of the best, if not, well, she's right up there. Because I was going to say MPP is probably the best. But uh, again, Sarah Nurse is just absolutely up there in terms of the best Canadian hockey player. Um, you love to see what she does. She's just, she's not only great on the ice, but she's also great off the ice, which is something that I absolutely love. Um, I, you just you can't get enough of these players with personality. And it just it's so nice to see. Um, and just, you know, she's on the cover of uh, NHL this year with Trevor Zegras. And she's doing amazing things. What what else could you ask for, right? And, of course, my good friend Anya Packer, who is the former Riveters general manager and someone that uh, really, truly aspires to change the game. I think that she is someone who is dedicated to not only changing the stereotypical culture in hockey, but bringing in, you know, other positives from other subcultures and niches in, you know, outside of hockey and bringing those into uh, the hockey space in a way that is positive and welcoming and inclusive and she's just an absolute gem to talk to but I could go on and on about my time with the Riveters and how exciting and uh, revolutionary it felt and of course Erica Ayala of uh, Black Rosie Media, PHF Broadcasting, Locked on Kraken and many many more. Uh, she is someone that is all over the place in the best way possible. Her resume is like a CVS receipt. It is just so fantastic. She's fantastic. And one of my favorite things about her is that she keeps it 100%, 100% of the time. And Ann Tukarski of the, um, I believe she is part of the Connecticut Wales public relations, social media team, uh, freelancing there, as well as, um, it's not the ECHL, but it's the, it's something very similar acronym wise. And that's my fault for not writing it down, but she has been doing a lot of amazing writing, um, 
I've known Anne since she was like seven, 16, 17 years old. And to watch her blossom into this incredible <laughs> professional and this wonderful woman is uh, truly an honor. And Ali Alonowicz from uh, also former Metropolitan Riveter, but she is um, working with me at the PHFPA in terms of getting, um, you know, she does a lot of, I don't want to say legal consulting because she's not a lawyer, but she does a lot of the legal writing. Um, and she does a lot in that because she is going to school for law and she is very familiar with it. So she is just someone that I, she, I believe she tore her ACL and that ended her uh, professional hockey career is in law school and is like, doing the PHFPA on top of it and she is crushing it and congratulations to everyone um again I I love all women you're all fantastic but I wanted to give some a special shout out I think you're all great shout out to the women that listen to this show um if you are a man Venmo a woman in your life five dollars Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with me on today's episode of Locked on Flames. I just realized I've worn this sweatshirt in every episode this week. You know, sometimes you just find a good sweatshirt and you just, it's comfy and it becomes your security blanket, but that's okay. So thanks, everyone. And I will be back tomorrow with Nick to do some more deep dives and engaging discussions. And we hope to hear from you. Bye-bye.